Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. The road to a brighter future begins with our being courageous enough to get on it and simply get started. I'm going to be talking about the road to 2023 and beyond the consensus of common interest. What can I can't breathe, Arab Springs, United Kingdom, United States, United Arab Emirates all have in common? I'll leave you to guess whilst I proceed with my advocacy. I imagine you, won't, you would have arrived at an answer before too long. Prosperity follows purpose, just as solutions and service are two sides of the same coin. Do I seem to be speaking in parables? Okay, let me speak more plainly then. Pursuing or hoarding money as an end in itself is shown in the endless vampire-like draining of our national resources by a batcher, or which seems to be happening with the Niger Delta on Development Fund, amongst other institutional lootings. This is a preamble to death and decay. The actions of our leaders would seem to be of those who gluttonously feast on the goose that lays the golden egg and later ask, what's for dessert? It's the height of foolishness. When we reflect on our failed democracy, it becomes apparent that the lack of common interest is at the heart of this failure. Common interest overcomes divisive tribalism, nepotism, elitism, racism, and other such like selfish interests. Ism may as well read, I serve myself first and last. Common interest is contrary to this. It ensures we come together for the common good. Building a better today and a better future for ourselves and the future of other generations. Colonel Umar, retired, accused our president of lopsided appointments, which he said was ru running or ruining this country. And I could hear the huge swell of silent acquiescence. But of course, in whose dictionary could lopsided appointments ever translate to common interest? We know what is right. Now is the time to put it into practice. Let us take personal responsibility for securing the interest of every Nigerian, regardless of tribe, religion, or other groupings used by politicians to divide us. If we fail in this, then it is we who have failed, not just our politicians. For the leadership to get away with self first, there must first be many more selfish followers who would hold the door open for them, all the while prostrating with cries of, Ogana, madam, I'm loyal. Consider the farmer who puts seed into the ground in hope. The seed germinates, even multiplies, and others besides him are nourished by its produce. That is the language of productivity in the common interest. Let us not believe the lie that Nigeria has gone to hell in a handbasket. If we sow today, we will reap a harvest that is hev a heavenly nation, one that is bound in freedom, peace, and unity. By now, you must have guessed what the various groupings have in common. Yes, you guessed right, common interest. Yeah, I mean, th this is it. We really should come together and have a common interest. But unfortunately, <laughs> it, is not, it is not the way it works. You know, um, we're so divided on so many different lines. And, um, you know, it, it's quite interesting that my topic was about labeling as well, because that, that's part of a, a way that we are divided. Um, I was reading some stuff and the way people generalize about different tribes, um, you know, so it's almost like they don't even see the individual. You know, they just hear, oh, you're Igbo or you're Yoruba, and then they ascribe all these characteristics and usually negative um, to you. So um, 
And that way, people don't come together. They don't even allow themselves to even interface to a, a degree where they could even know the human in, you know, under or in, around this label or whatever you want to call it. So as much as I love what you're saying, I just feel like, I don't know, Nigeria right now, because they, we feel like the cake is so small, we're not, we don't believe that there's enough to go around. So what we need to do is as, take, our share. Yeah, take our share and try and get rid of those that may be trying to take some of that share. Wow. So yeah, unfortunately, that is the mentality here. You know, I mean, the, the speed and the, the ferociousness that our politicians jump into the race and, you know, considering we're being told that Nigeria is, you know, we don't have money anymore, nothing's going, but yet they're in there. It's like they're fighting for the little that is left. I think we can have a common interest if Nigerians were more historically aware. <laughs> I think yeah. the things that are used to divide Nigerians, which are primarily ethnicity and religion, mm. if Nigerians understood their history over even just the past 100 years, I think they would ascribe a lot less importance to these things. If if, if every, well, not every Nigerian, but if most Nigerians understood that, regardless of whether you are Ibibio or you are Yoruba, or wherever you are from in this country, your experiences are actually not that different historically up till today. So 300 years ago, you know, regardless of where you were born in this country, there was a risk that at any point in time you could be kidnapped by slave raiders and you get sold and taken to the port in Badagri or Wida or wherever and taken to Jamaica or the US. After that then came colonialism where everyone uniformly was humiliated mm. by the British. Uniformly. There was no, oh, you know, we, this group is above this group. The British humiliated everyone equally. We're all black people to them. But when you look closely, um, think about the fact that what Abdullahi wants, or what Uche wants, or what Bolaun wants, or what Osage wants, when you really drill down, are not particularly different. Education, mm -hmm. healthcare, if I'm sick, I want to be able to get healed or, or, or attended to. Uh, I want to be able to pursue happiness, to get a job, to be able to, you know, have a family, whatever. And wherever you go to, you find those common denominations. Don't be deceived by anything called Boko Haram. Boko Haram is, is um, it's, it's a creation of the northern elite in the sense that they send their own children to all the best schools in Nigeria and abroad. Mm -hmm. So, and they are also Muslim. So, there's nothing like uh, uh, education is haram. It's, yes. it's nonsense. It's, it's, it doesn't exist. You know. So, when you go to that ordinary citizen across the entire nation, what they want is the same. I mean, mm. I, what partly inspired this was. You know, I, I heard of some people coming together because of the COVID-19. They're looking for ways to do some good in the community. And, and, and I realized they weren't even diverse from different parts of Nigeria, but they've been so motivated by the people, the sufferings of other people in their community that they, they're coming together. And, and I thought, well, that's, that's, and even if you look at, you know, like where I work, we're, we're all working towards a common goal. And it's, it's amazing when your eye is fixed on a singular goal, you forget. You're just looking for who is the best person exactly. to support, to get the job done. Yeah, I think, it, it, you see, what it is is that how do we get us as Nigerians to not keep being um, sectional? Because that's really what, mm. you know, is behind all this. Um, you know, there was this message, uh, message I was answering today on WhatsApp about the lopsidedness or not of the NNPC um, whatever. Mm. And they were writing and trying to show how they are probably more southerners actually in NNPC than northerners. Okay. And I just thought, I mean, this is a load of cuts water, really. Because the Minister of Petroleum is from the north, that's Buhari. The DG in the Ministry of Finance that was sent to be on the board will report back to the Finance Minister, who is northern. And the MD himself of NNPC is northern. That's, that's what we like all of us on this panel today, are far more educated to be bamboozled by the nonsense that your, your president is sectional. And how are you going to make progress if that happens? I think this is partly what makes people long for strong men, somebody who can hammer everyone into a single direction. Mm, yeah. However, I think in this case, what Nigerians actually need, or if so, some, what a smart politician would do if they were say the president, is that they will take advantage of that desire for a strong man. And instead of acting like a dictator, they would rather try to inspire yeah. Nigerians. Yeah. That's okay. the ultimate yeah, form of being right, a yeah. politician. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. look forward to that. Mm. Okay. Yeah.
Although it seems like we're pointing out the things we should already know, it's in pointing it out that we're able to reach a consensus on the way forward. So keep the conversation going on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time when we'll be dropping more heartfelt advocacies, no excuses, just a stirring to action and solutions. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, is that it? <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.